with the features She bad, this a misdemeanor Sick with it, I might catch a fever Hello guys, welcome to Boxing Block Center, the home of Nigerian Film Boxing. Please, if you're new to the channel, make sure you click the like of course it's over right now. And also go to the notification bell icon, click it and select all. Okay, so I turn up in your bank a new exclusive video, you'll definitely be notified. So let's get straight right here with our station. Emmanuel Odiase, the new everweight monster in town, um, signed to is now signed to AJ Boxing, okay, managed by Anthony Joshua. We know that Joshua founded AJ Boxing. We all know what AJ Boxing is all about. And the people they've managed, they've groomed, and how well they take care of their fighters. Emmanuel Diasa, um, according to 258 MGT, this is a sighting everywhere prospect. Emmanuel Diasa joins 258 team. Having already sparred dance of the game, including Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk, Bronze Bomber, which is Deontay Water, and Derek Del Boy, etc. Big things are expected as the German makes his pro debut in his home country tomorrow. That was that was the release. Uh, it was his press release up uh, yesterday. Well, tonight, Emmanuel Diasa is gonna make his pro debut. Bro, on the um. P2M box promotion, the German boxing uh, promotional company. I'm so excited because Odiasa deserve this um, exposure and also being groomed. I mean, it's just I'm so excited, bro. I remember when he sparred Joshua, and I and how um, happy Joshua was with him. Because he did help Joshua in that. Listen, let's keep it right here. He did help Joshua in that in that uh, in that camp. And having been in the ring with the likes of all the others that who seek Deontay Water, Derek Chisora, it's not a small feat. Listen, if you are like Alakalo said, if you are not good, if you if you don't have some sort of reputation or if you don't have some sort of talent or some sort of um skill set in which um um what these heavy heavy brand big brands um let's say heavy monsters you know heavy everywhere monsters like that joshua you know uh usik deontay water will not even look at your side if you don't if you don't have anything going for you it's just amazing to see your uh, I haven't been in the ring with those guys and his style of fighting is very appealing okay uh what do you make of this right here bro uh to jack boy yeah this is uh this is good news for him you know um, i know you've been following him for a while you've been mentioning his name for for quite a while now yeah man i also I interv i also interviewed him bro yeah, I, <laughs> don't yeah, get it right i, I, I interviewed I on my I, channel the th yeah. i had to remove the video because i don't know at that time i was dealing with a youtuber uh, you know problems and they said to delete a lot of videos or so so i just accidentally removed it but i'm gonna conduct another interview with him you know he's a uh, bro his family bro i tell you right now this guy right here i'm supporting, I'm supporting me all the way all the way very you know down to earth guy um, the time he came to Eindhoven to fight, I was supposed to be there, but uh, there was a there was a delay. But I don't. Next time there will be no delay because I just go in my car now. I my license, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, that's, good. that's good. You know, you you have you have yourself a good a good uh, fan base and a good platform, and you, you these guys come and talk on your show, and you know you build, you give them at least a good. A good amount of fan base, you know. They they see his name popping around and they start following, and it's all it's it's all thanks to you, you know. And hopefully he remembers, you know, to continuously giving you interviews. But some of these guys they forget and they don't do it because now they want to speak to more popularity of the YouTubers. But you know, you have been mentioning this guy for a while now, and I still remember. I remember that uh, when you told me you had interviewed him. 
and uh, the spar him and him and Deontay Wilder sparring, and then you know AJ sparring, and then the Tyson Fury sparring. You know, so it seems like he's making the necessary sacrifice to be able to do these things, and it's only going to help him out more in the long run because um, I can't wait to see him. I haven't not, I haven't seen him fight, but you know. If if I could if I could get a glimpse, like you could you could really tell who's going to be uh, who's going to be the next the next superstar, you know, just based off uh, just based off on his work ethics and what he's doing currently. You know, it's very impressive. And let's see let's see how it goes, man. As of right now, I think uh, he passes the eye test for sure, so he can definitely be a superstar if if he's mar- marketed right. And 258 management is the perfect people to do it, you know, just based on marketability, you know, so that's a good thing. And um, he's just waiting to see what happens next. He's also, I think he's 23, he was 23 when I interviewed him, or 22 or so. I think he's 20, mm. 20, uh, he's between 23, 24 now, I guess, you know. Okay. Uh, still very young. Uh, I, I like the fact that he's turning pro now because. I was very worried, you know, when, you know, I asked him when I interviewed him, I told him, I asked him, I said, when are you going to turn pro? He said, uh, he doesn't know yet, um, sometime in the future or so, but I was like, okay, um, hopefully he doesn't do a Joe Joyce, basically turning pro too late, you know? So, you know, a lot of boxers want to chase Olympics and stuff like that, you know? I just feel like, I mean, not everybody has to go that route you know if you got the talent you go for it that is actually true because you know once you, if you actually stay in the olympic too long you know there's a big difference between olympic and the and the, the um the the professional route you know you don't want to be you don't want to be in the and then you you you, you, you get work, outworked by other people who are more talented yeah, yeah just speak, bro. Olympic speak. doesn't necessarily mean, to me personally, Olympic doesn't necessarily mean you're very good. Olympic just me- necessarily means you just based on the tryouts and everything, you pa- you probably passed a certain mark of where of, of where um, when the tryouts were were set, you passed a certain test, and you know it doesn't necessarily mean the person that you fought to pass that test was even good. He could have been a beginner himself. You know, and that that and the other very good fighters, they decided not to go to Olympic because they probably didn't even get sponsored. You know, and yeah. these guys, by the time they get professional route, they get beat by fighters they haven't hurt because those fighters haven't gotten sponsored because they're so poor. Yeah, bro, I'm listening. You know, to go into the Olympics. And they end up going the professional route when they meet somebody who's able to really, you know, really give them uh, the opportunity. But that's that's my that's my opinion because it seems like that's the way it works. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, and also I think, uh, I think boxing is gonna be strapped from Olympics soon, right? Yeah, they're looking to uh, cancel that sport out in boxing. It's crazy, I don't know bro. Why. They do that, bro. It's so crazy. That would be fucked up for boxing. It really would be. It really would be. I think, um, you know what? It's because nowadays, I think they're starting to see um, that the uh, the professional way, like the fighters, back in the day, they used to make money off these fighters, you know, because they didn't. these other fighters didn't know how to be marketable. But now this Instagram and social media, now these guys are not, are not doing all that, you know, uh, third party, trying to get marketed. They could do it themselves if they got the right platform, if they get the right fan base, they could do it themselves. And now they're starting to see what's the point of, you know, trying to market small fighters. People don't know. They don't make money out of it anymore. So that's going to be the issue now. So I think they're starting to see right here. Time to get rid of it, personally. And now people, boxing is, I don't know, boxing is kind of seems like it's kind of dying out. Bro, I think the only the heavyweight division is the only division that can resurrect uh, boxing to a, to a bigger stage, like if, uh, he's always done. Remember when Joshua was on top, 
the there was a lot there were a lot of fans a lot like a lot more fans you know coming to boxing and now that joshua and wada got the throne now we don't have um yeah like it's just declining a little bit fury is not it's not really it though bro it's not really it bro it's not bringing more fans to the to the, to the sport oh yeah but we'll be in saudi because right now there's fights going on in saudi right now and as i can see um Marty Bacoli, you know, has been interviewed after his fight, I guess. We'll definitely get to that right now, bro. Stay tuned, guys. Cheers. <laughs>